right? Where I saw you, 10 out of 10 instantly. And obviously you're still a 10 out of 10 for me. Yeah, when I first saw you, I yeah. thought eight out of 10. Dang, that is crazy <laughs> that you would just, that you would just, I can't even believe that I would just put myself out there like that and you would just call me an eight out of 10. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the It Takes Two podcast episode number two. Number two. Numero two. It's crazy that this has been already a week since we launched. I mean, this is a Sunday that we're recording, but we put out episodes on Friday. So it's crazy yeah. that it's already been a week since the launch. It's so crazy, but we want to say thank you so much to everyone. Honestly, your support, like... I think I'm just blown away. I don't know. You can speak for yourself, but it's just yeah, don't been, speak for me. <laughs> it's just been so, so precious to hear um, from our friends, from our family, from people that we don't know yet through online. Thank you so much for watching with us, for encouraging us, for asking questions and just for uh, being involved in the process. It's so cool. Yeah, it's been fun to see people that whatever you put, I mean, we're putting this out and Honestly, I think we talked a little bit about the genesis of, of how it started and everything, but it's kind of crazy because it happened in a matter of about two weeks where yeah. we felt we wanted to do it and then we put out an episode. So it's cool because you do the episode and people actually listen. And yeah. it's, you know, it's, you <laughs> There's know. There's people out there and they like it. It's amazing. It's amazing. They like us. Thank you guys for liking us. They um, really, really like me. So we're but, just. Well, seriously though, like. <laughs> Seriously, you guys really like us. That's amazing. No, I mean, like, I'm interrupting you yet again. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Oh, that was a joke? Like, I didn't mean to, but... Go on. You're already I, there. I'm doing it again, like I said, every week. But it's not It's not intentional. Was there a point to interrupting me? or? Well, I just got so caught up in doing it that I forgot why. <laughs> okay. Well... Before we get started with the episode, everybody. You oh, guys, I remember now. Oh okay. Oh my <laughs> gosh. This is how you know that we're just so real. We're not cutting anything. Um, no, I, I was just talking to my cousin about this on the phone because she called me and I said, you know what? I think we just had no idea what to expect. We just felt like we were called to do this podcast. We need to be obedient. We just need to step out in faith and do it. And I feel like the response that we've been getting has been so overwhelmingly positive mm -hmm. that the only way I can explain it to people who have been asking me, how's it going? We're so proud of you. We're excited for you. The only way I could describe it is it just must be a God thing. Like when you say yes, because you feel like God called you and then you're blessed because yeah. God called you and you're obedient and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's actually happening. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that's what happens when you walk in obedience. So I think that was really cool. Yeah, it, it's been awesome. I mean, we had what? 700 800 youtube views and it keeps going up so i feel like it's just the confirmation of like oh i think yeah. god wants me to do this and oh there really is a need out there yeah a couple hundred downloads so yeah thank you for listening thank you for sharing um if you guys haven't the best way that you guys can say thank you or be involved is to if you're on apple or if you're on spotify you guys can leave a five-star review and yes, please. you can you, uh, leave a written review where we t you talk about how you enjoyed the episode and the podcast and the what you like about it. And that'll get posted on Apple Podcasts. But that's how we end up getting ranked on it. Like, comment, subscribe, subscribe review. Review, Yelp review, Google review. Follow. Follow. All, do all, all the terms. Do, all, do everything <laughs> you can because, um, yeah, I think, I mean, we really do believe in this podcast. So we hope that it's going to be a resource to a lot of people so you guys can help in doing that. Yeah. Practically, people have been asking, like, how can we help? Like, what can yeah. we do? You guys can, if you want, you can Venmo us a $1,000. <laughs> uh, you can cash out us. No, just kidding. Shameless, but no. Just like, comment, subscribe, leave reviews. It really does do the most just so that if you like it, you know, the algorithm will know that more people are going to like it. So they're going to push it. And that's, you know, that's what you can do to help us. So thank you for what you've done so far. It's been just incredible. And I decided, I'm like, okay, before we start, we have to say thank you because it's just honestly insane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. So thank you guys so much. Um, this episode, we're going to be talking about how you know if somebody's the one 
right? I don't know exactly yeah. what we're titling it, but that's going to be the re- what we're Are they the at. one? Are that's a good title. Are they the one? Question mark, question mark, question mark. But before that, you know, we we want to kind of make podcast episodes have segments and feels to it and the last um episode we kind of talked about some um relationship i don't know myths misconceptions misconceptions uh if you will of of what people think about a relationship and we kind of talked a little bit about that so we thought why not make an entire segment about it Mm -hmm. and we are titling the segment which i came up with this title oh okay we're claiming ideas now are are. we (laughs) i claim this idea it's the take or fake segment. And yeah. I'm only claiming it because I'm really proud of, of it. So what it is. I is, like rhyming and alliteration. Yeah. And you know what? Maybe eventually we'll have some theme music to it. You know, like on a, on, dun, dun, dun. On a Jimmy. No, that's that's <laughs> like a horror movie. <laughs> We're looking for something fun. La, la, la. <laughs> All right, we'll 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 discuss this after he goes, the podcast. Cut, cut, cut. Um, but you know, like Jimmy Fallon does it sometimes. Like, hey sure. guys, here's uh, Mad Libs, and then there's yeah. the the band in the background. So we'll okay. have a on let's a get segment. to the info. Um, I'm just saying ideas, uh, but take or fake. So we're talking about myths and you know it's things that we've heard about relationships, and we say, oh, we'll either take that advice, yes, endorse it. Or fake means obviously fake news, not real. Don't listen to it. Yeah. So do you do you do I have it? I have it right here. Yeah. Well, I think last time we kind of touched on a few, um, like your first year of marriage is going to be the hardest year, and we were like, nah, that's fake. Fake. Um, fake news. Fake news. Then you know people gave us a reaction like it's your seventh anniversary. Ooh, like seven year itch. People get tired of mm-hmm. each other. People want to move on. Fake news. Yeah. Um, Fake. So I have a couple written down, but the first one um, is having arguments is a bad sign in relationships. Is that take or fake? Mm, uh, having having fights in a relationship. Yeah. Is if you're fighting, does that mean that it's a bad sign in your relationship? Um, I don't. I will say fake. Um, I think that it can be an indicator. But I think for the most part, a blanket statement, I would say, I I would say that's fake. And the reason I would say that is because I think um, with any relationship, there's always, there needs to be growing pains. Yep. And I think in a relationship, when you're getting to know somebody that's obviously very different than you, we are very, two very different people, me and you. And I think when when you go get past that honeymoon stage of dating or marriage or whatever, you feel, you realize that there's going to be some level of friction because of the different people that, you know, you're different. So yeah. I think in order to grow, you need to have those conversations and those are arguments. And because you think I'm an idiot, I think you're an idiot for <laughs> having a, some type of preference and then we come to yeah. a conclusion. So I'll say fake because I think any relationship is – if you don't fight – doesn't mean it's not healthy if you're having disagreements or a marital, uh, what do they call it? Yeah, but here's the thing. I mean, disagreements are fights. I, I know I'm putting it delicately. No, I know. But some people, I don't know, people are like, we don't fight. We disagree. Please. Marital discussions. That's Mar- what it is. <laughs> when people are like, we don't fight. We have marital discussions. We don't fight. We disagree. That's fighting. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's unhealthy to fight with your spouse. I think that there can be healthy boundaries in place. Like, you know, I have learned I'm not going to call you names. <laughs> uh, That's a funny story. I, 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 we're, we, won't, we won't tell the whole story, but basically, long story short, when we were dating one time, we, we were in a group of friends and Adrian called me a name in front of people. As it was a, like meant to be playful, funny, yeah, as but a we joke. were also kind of like fighting. And it, did, I, it was not received. It was well. not funny. It was not, it was not, not cool well. in public. And I learned shut it down. <laughs> so yeah. I don't do that anymore, yeah. even if it's funny. So you learn things like that, but that's it. Just requires those types of instances to realize. Okay, what's off limits? What's not? What's good? What's bad? Preferences. I mean, we're not going to say like the always, the never, the. Yeah. But for the most part, having arguments is a bad sign. I would say fake. What would you you say, fake? 
Yeah, I, I say within bounds, yeah. fake. Like Now, if you're arguing every single day and you hate your life and you guys are miserable and you guys aren't laughing, you guys are always arguing, yeah, probably probably a, a bad sign. But there. don't think that because, oh, we fought today, oh, it's over. It's not over. I think that, you know, you're bound to disagree on certain topics. You're bound to talk it out. I think how you navigate those conversations is what's healthy and unhealthy. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, never go to bed angry. Well, I I used to think that that Fake. was like... <laughs> Wait, we don't... That's not even... That's a, not even on what? our list, but I used to think that that was like, oh, it's so bad. But sometimes, like, I just... I need to process and think, and, and I'm not done. But I'm not going to, like, continue this for a long stretch. I, normally, actually, when I wake up, I'm less emotional in the morning than I am at night before I go to bed. Sometimes you just need a little napsky. Yeah. You know? It's like, oh, okay, don't go to bed angry, but... Sometimes I'm but like, but we're still sleeping in the same bed. I may just like uh, face the other. Sometimes way. I, yeah. Sometimes I just I want to live through the night, so I can't I can't <laughs> press it too much because I'm trying to. We're all fall asleep. I'm trying to wake we'll up like the next talking. morning to have a marriage to go to. So yeah, we've. I mean, that's a that's a, a, a asterisk one, but I think within bounds. Yeah, then I think a lot of scripture people take it so literal. Which some scripture is literal, but I think a lot of times, especially in we're, when we're looking in places like Proverbs, that a lot of that is is advice that can be taken not in a very literal sense. So anyways, um, I'll, I'll, I'll do the second one. A great relationship is easy. Well, I don't know. It's or. <laughs> it's and the. I feel like. I mean, it shouldn't be super hard to be with the person you're with. It shouldn't be overly complicated. But, like, I think, okay, yes, you can have disagreements. You can have fights. I think at some points it, it can be hard. But I think love is a choice. So I think if you've chosen that person for the rest of your life, you choose within bounds, you know, to work through those difficult seasons. Mm-hmm. So I think it can be easy. I think it can be fun. I think as long as you're both healthy and you're doing the work, and if it's not easy, then you're going to have to put your hand to the plow a little bit. Yeah. Pick me, choose me, love, love me. me. That's what I thought of when you were talking. What do you think? Um, you know, I agree with that. I think there's tons of different seasons in a relationship. And you will go through hard seasons because life is life. And just because you're with somebody that you love and sacrifice for and love being with doesn't mean that you're not going to come with hard seasons. But yeah, I mean, it, relationships, marriage is is something that is blessed by God and God puts a special blessing over marriage. And so if God blesses something that I don't think he intends for that thing to be filled with a bunch of strife and toil every single day. I think he intends for it to be filled with joy and laughter and levity. And so if you're doing it properly in the right way, I think that marriage should outweigh the hard seasons. Yeah. When you think about it, it's like when you think about Disneyland, right? It's like you think about th throughout the day. The it's lines? Like, of course. That's what I'm saying. Like, okay, you have the lines that you sit in, you know, 5 p.m. rolls around and you're tired because you've been walking 10 miles in the day and you're hungry and the food's not the best. But, you know, two weeks later, three weeks wait later, when you're looking back on it, you're like, man, that was so fun. Because Let's go to Disneyland. We just were there, actually. <laughs> but you're getting me excited again. But yeah, but when, when you... When you look back, you remember, and I think that that should be the way that you see your marriage is there are hard seasons, but then when you look at it holistically, what do you think? Yeah. And I think that's a good indicator. Yeah, I think that's good. What's the next one? Next take or fake idea. Oh, you should want to be together all the time. <laughs> well, I am a well. love language quantity time person. Oh, I was until I had to be brought back into balance i would want to spend all of my time with spencer when we were dating yeah so <laughs> and, and sometimes i'd be like don't you love me you don't want to spend time with me you're like balance my dear balance yeah we so yeah i want to spend all to my time with you but i also think you know i have grown as an individual growth yet again mm -hmm. and like i am an individual i was talking to my friend about this earlier this week like, I may be in diff a different season than some of my friends, but I can still 
do things on my own. I can still hang out with my single friends or I can go hang out with my friends that are in different seasons and it be okay. Or, you know, go, go places by myself. It's okay Mm -hmm. to do that. It's actually probably healthy to have relationships outside of your spouse that are friends that are good for you. But you should also want to be by your spouse. You should also (laughs) want to spend time with them. Like, if you're like, ah, I don't care if they're gone forever. I'm like, is that healthy? <laughs> yeah, I think it's a balance of, you know, you shouldn't, because the question is what you should want to be together all the time. Yeah, I mean, you should have a desire to be with one another. But at the same time, it's, yeah, in our dating season, you know, I just, I, I'm a very like, I don't even know how to describe my personality because I am such an extrovert. And then at the very same time, like I love just like, unwinding and not being with anybody you like your solitude yeah i love solitude and it fills me up but i love being with people so it's just this weird but when we were dating you know there were seasons or initially where like we're spending all all day together i want to get everything you know it's like monday date day because you know church and we have mondays off and so we would I'd, we'd get breakfast, coffee, we'd be out, we'd go to Seattle, we do this, we do that. I get back at, you know, 8 p.m. and whatever, we watch a movie. And then Tuesday, you know, we, we go home, I take her home. And then the next day I'm in interns and I'm doing homework. And, and I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. And she's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, okay, I'm doing well, homework. Like I'm busy with life, woman. What are you doing? And then I get, and then I get off of interns and she says, okay, you want to hang out? And I say, well, not really. I, I mean, I didn't say that because I wanted to stay dating, but I, I'm, I just wanted, I want to watch a TV show or I just want to be in my room and, and not do anything. But it's not the fact that I didn't want, I was like, oh no, I don't want to be with you. It was just the fact that I need my time. And, uh, you, we, couples can be codependent. Yeah. Couple definitely. Cult, we've all heard that. I think, is that still a yeah. term people use? Couple cult? I don't know, but I see it and I'm like, come on, you, you have other things in life, right? Like yeah. I was I'm listening actually to another couple that we know that it's really incredible that live in our state. I thought you were about to expose a couple. No, no, no. I was oh, just saying speaking like, of couple calls, there's this people that we know, their names no, are. No, I'm not going to call people out in a negative light. No, I was listening to some um, advice from a couple that I, I really admire that live in our state, I said, and they talked about don't find your identity in the blessings of God, but find your identity in the one who gives the blessings. And I thought that was so good. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about couple cult, I'm like, oh, there's so much more to life than your person. Even though they're amazing, yes, they're a blessing. Yes, like they're your partner for life, but like there are other things in life. Yeah. You know? Yeah, there are other things. I think in everything, I'm like, take fake, take fake, but balance, you know? Of course, yeah, absolutely. So... I think everybody should have their independent lives and you should live life together as much as you can. But I would say for the most part, fake, right? That's what we said. Fake. Yeah. I think fake. Okay. So the final one is this men should always pay for dates. Uh, Take fake. What? I'm just kidding. (laughs) No. Okay. I think take, I think. I'm just kidding. I say take two. In general, I think what is, what are the five P's? I don't want to say it. Okay. Well, one <laughs> of the kidding. five P's is provider. Yeah, like that's all what we the roles of a man, there are five P's. One of them is provider. And I think like, yes, like it's okay. Sometimes if the woman is the breadwinner, we've been that in different seasons, we've traded off in that. But in general, it's like the heart of the man should be to provide for his family, do whatever it takes. And if you're not practicing that in your dating life, like I'm concerned for your married life that they're going to become complacent and you being the provider. I've been a sugar mama. Who wants to be a sugar mama? Not to me. No, not to you. Just to, just to clarify, okay? No, but I've been a sugar mama. And really, it's just like, oh, this guy, like, he just did not have it together. I'm like, and I I wish he would have paid. But I'm like, you know, at the end of the day, I want to do what I want to do. And selfishly, yeah. if you can't do it, I'm going to make it possible so we can do it anyway. So I'm just going to pay. Mm-hmm. But it got it got old after a while. Well, yeah, obviously. I, I would say, I mean, take, wait, men should always pay for dates. Yeah, take. If you don't have a job, you shouldn't have a girl. Well, that's the thing. It's like, if you don't got a job, what are you, what are you doing dating? And hopefully, what are you doing? You should not what be married. What are you doing in you, life, yeah. my man? <laughs> <laughs> you should definitely not be married if you don't have a job. But I'm saying, if you don't have a job, what are you? Don't pursue someone. Yeah, don't pursue somebody. And when, I mean, 
for context, I said this last week, when we dated, when I was an intern, I was broke, but- Because I, of me. <laughs> yes, because Adrian was my biggest expense. Um, you had like three, four jobs. Yeah, no, I know. You are very high maintenance and you love your gifts. Um, but that's not why I had four jobs because of just you, because I had things to pay for, obviously. But, um, that's life. Yeah, that's, that's life. And I, but I wanted to pay for you always dinner, meal, gifts. Honestly, I don't think I'm being hyperbolous when I say, I don't think you ever paid for anything when we were dating. No, even like, okay, this is a funny story, but when we were first getting to know each other, we were in a group setting. Mm -hmm. We were at a restaurant. Catons. Um, yeah, nasty. They bulldoze that place. <laughs> um, Too many health concerns. We were out with me. friends, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to test this guy. I only got a piece of toast at this diner. It was like a couple dollars, but you know, they're handing out checks, and I was like, oh, he's going to pay for me. Yeah. And you were that. like, oh my gosh, I am. And I'm like, we'll see how he takes the. So fire. hopefully, this this clears on my card. It did. It did. The two dollars and forty cents or whatever it was, it did. Mm -hmm. But. I, I mean, seriously. So I didn't pay for anything. <laughs> you didn't pay for anything. But I wanted it that way. And I didn't have a lot to give. But in my head, when we were dating, it was the idea of, oh, yeah, of course, I want to be able to sacrifice and live sacrificially for you because I always wanted you to feel taken care of. And I think that does translate over to security, marriage, security, trust, where, you yeah. know, I and listen, I wasn't paying for you and complaining to you that I didn't have a lot of money. No, I had no idea. Yeah, no idea how much money I made. I mean, I probably should have assumed, but I didn't know. Yeah, but, you know, it's not like, oh, I hold. No, I, I was confident in it and I wanted to take care of you. And, and in that, I feel like I learned sacrificially to put you first in a lot of different areas mm. so that that's just the mentality that I had that was easy transition to marriage of, oh, yeah, I'm used to sacrificing for you, which is what a relationship should be. So, yeah, sacrificing. So, I, I think. You know, you can disagree all you want, but you're wrong. I'm just kidding. Um, I, I think guys should always pay for, for girls. I think so, too. I, that's not like a, ooh, sexist, misogynistic, girls but are just as good as guys thing. some people just, thing. like, hate on traditional and, like, old-fashioned ideas, but... If it's not broke, don't fix it. I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of with it. Well, of course. Because traditional gender roles in our society have come from the way that our Christian was, or our nation was formed, which was a Christian nation, which what, that's biblical gender roles, but whatever, that's the whole, that's another topic, that's we'll have to get into that another that we can day. Get on to. Okay, those are all of them, that's a good, I think I like that segment, if yeah. you guys have uh, recommendations for myths or questions, you guys Ooh. can always go to our uh, Q&A, our anonymous Q&A, which we'll always put at the bottom of the show notes on podcast or on YouTube in description or on Instagram mm -hmm. in the bio. Right? Yeah, so make sure you send and if you have anything that you want us to take or fake, let questions. us know. Questions. We'll get to those in a little bit. But yeah, we'll do questions, Q&A at the end from what you guys have sent in in the last week. So let, let's go to the, the main meat of the podcast. Are they the one? Are they the one? I actually hate when people say meat as a reference to like... Yeah, I just want to move on from that. Think of it. Um, so... What are some good qualities to look for in a spouse? Like I, when I was growing up, I felt like I had heard things of like, you know, make a list, be as detailed as you want. Like God yeah. will give you the desires of your heart. And mm -hmm. so I was listening to a podcast that I really like of some local girls too. And they were talking about like, okay, well, how detailed is too detailed? And I was like, oh, I totally agree. Like I would write like, I want this height, this hair color, this what hair eye color like it, that stuff is like okay god does care about like your preferences but ultimately is that truly what matters most to you is what they look like or is it how they treat you yeah i mean adrian showed me her list when we got married and I it did was not yes you did and it was five seven half japanese man named spencer really good at it did not look like that. <laughs> <laughs> it did not look like that. What was on your list? You had a list like that? I'm curious, I did, actually. but when I wrote it, I was describing someone I liked at the time. It wasn't let me, like... Let me guess. Let me guess. Six, two. 
Oh, I put six one. See, I'm close. Six two. Um, blonde. Yes. Yep. No, nah, I know. I know. Um, but you don't actually know the person I was describing. No, I don't. This yeah. is all intuition. Uh, football player. Uh, I don't think I wrote that. I don't know. Mm. I just remember I wrote those two things down and it just. That when, was it? <laughs> no, I'm just saying like, for example, like when you're, I, I actually have told girls, like, I do think it's important to make a list because. And check it twice. And, <laughs> pray about it. Pray about your list of what you want in a spouse. And I think that when you're actually prayerfully considering what is most important to you, either based on experiences, based on preferences, based on your belief structure, I think that when you're actually looking for a spouse, you're actually going to find someone like that because you're going to weed out people that don't meet those requirements. Yeah. I think lists, lists are healthy if you are if you don't make like an idol out of your list, obviously, because yeah. it's like, yeah, God will give you the desires of your heart unless the desires of your heart are not good. Or go against his will. Exactly. So I think it's important to make a list. And I don't want to, I don't want to downplay physical attraction. No, I'm not saying it's not important. I'm just saying like you... In everything in life, when it comes yeah, to no. like what God wants for you, you have to be open handed. So I'm like, oh, I think I have these preferences, but God obviously like, I know, you know, what's best for me and I'm open to who you have for me. I never thought, <laughs> I would never thought I would marry someone who was Asian. I didn't think I had preferences, but obviously I was like, oh, I got to have this guy. <laughs> but I got to have it this. It is very important to be attracted to your person. Mr. Miyagi in his youth. Um, no, <laughs> no, absolutely not. Uh, you don't know. You don't know how he looked in his youth. He probably looks similar to me. I don't want to even think about that. Um, but no, I, I don't want to downplay physical attraction because it's, it's very, it's so important. And I think sometimes Christians, especially they can get super weird where, you know, they're like, I want a man or a woman with that loves the Lord. And I don't care about anything else. Okay, well, you should. You should. You should. Because yeah. especially for guys, it's so interesting. You know, I will tell a guy every single time he asks me, what should I look for in a girl? And I'll say, okay, obviously she loves the Lord. Yeah, okay. The next thing that you should look for is that you are physically attracted to her. Yeah. Like you find her beautiful. You find her 10 out of 10. Because... You know, women are, and men are very different in this regard, in my opinion. I think that men physically become more attractive to women when they feel safer and more emotionally invested in them and they get to know their personality. I think a, a man becomes more physically attracted to a woman. I don't think a, a woman ever becomes more physically attracted to a man. I think the physical attraction is there and then they fall deeper in love with their personality and their character and that's where they fall deeper in love with but the physical men are men and women are just wired so differently right where i saw you 10 out of 10 instantly and obviously you're still a 10 out of 10 for me yeah when i first saw you i yeah. thought 8 out of 10 dang that is crazy <laughs> that you would just that you would just I can't even believe that I would just put myself out there like that and you would just call me an 8 out of 10. I'm just kidding. I I already knew this. I already knew this. I obviously see you as a 10 out of 10 now, but that's because it's proving your point that like it changes for women where it never changed for you. Yeah. You were beautiful. I mean, and, and you are more beautiful to me as a person and because I just, I know so much about you and yeah. But physical attraction, I found you beautiful then and I find you beautiful now. Like a guy's not going to find a girl and say, that girl is really ugly and then get to know her and say, wow, that girl is so attractive. Yeah. She might become a friend to you, but they never break past that. Where don't and don't even don't even act, don't even try and come at me with this. Everybody that's <laughs> listening, because don't even act like I'm super superficial and whatever, because, you know, you know girls that are like, ugh, that guy is so gross or ill. I would never. And then they end up dating him. You yeah. know people that have said that. Yeah. And you also have seen pictures of girls that are with guys and you think, how the heck did that guy get that girl? But rarely do you ever see a picture of a couple and you say, how did that girl get that guy? 
Physical attraction is important. That's what I'm saying. What I, other what were we qualities, even talking about? What other qualities <laughs> should oh, someone yes, look yes, for yes. in a spouse? Well, that you love the Lord, obviously. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, no, I well, think I'm that your kidding, faith but. is super important. I think physical attraction is super important. I also think security is super important. Do you trust that person? Yeah, but I mean, also like, Yes, that is a quality that you want, but if you're making a list of somebody you've never met before, or that's not that's not what we're talking about. Sorry, I kind of went on my rant. And what are qualities that you want in a person? Yes, yes, yes. Trust is trust. You is want really, someone who is trustworthy. Yes, very trustworthy. Um, you also want somebody that you you have fun with, and that's kind mm-hmm. of like an intangible. But but there's just personalities that you just vibe together, yeah. and it's and it's easy to be with them mm-hmm. it doesn't take work you have you, a natural connection natural connection is is pretty big you have things in common the, yes. i think people downplay like the importance of finding things in common having fun together i think that's how you build to deeper connection yeah absolutely and i mean another quality that you should look for maybe in a guy is he's strong and strength looks different in, you know, I'm not like 6'4 jacked, but I'm talking about strong as in you, it kind of goes back to trust, but you'll trust him to make decisions and you'll mm-hmm. trust him to lead. And he's decisive and he's able to step up when, when needed. Um, confrontation, he's willing to step into confrontation, but he's not too eager to step into confrontation. So strength is, is, is a good quality to look for in a guy. I uh, like that. Yeah, thank you. Um, in a girl... Uh, I, I think. I think confidence is beautiful. I think yeah, especially for great. women, insecurity is such a huge battle. Whether it comes, um, how you see other people in a physical sense, in comparison, I think insecurity is huge. So when you find a woman who's confident, I think that that is one of the most beautiful qualities you can find. And everybody's gonna have different qualities that they look for. Um, that that they gravitate towards. Some people want somebody that's more chill and laid back. Some people will love like an extrovert that's out there that's rah rah. And so you just have to figure out who you want in somebody. And yeah, let it be a let it be an outline and a guideline. But just because you want someone blonde doesn't mean a brunette asks you out and you say no. That's the I think dumbest thing I've ever heard. Someone who's patient, who's generous, someone who you know loves your family. Someone yes. who treats you with yes. respect. Someone that your friends admire. I friends think, is a good one. I think those are really big qualities that can be applicable to anyone. Mm-hmm. Like whatever you're looking for in a person, I think those qualities really matter. I think it's important. This is important. If you're dating somebody, if you get past a certain point, whenever you ask your friends or family in general about them, once you've hit a certain point, people kind of like have to get on board. Yeah. So you, know, you got to ask for those opinions early. from the beginning and you have to be willing. If you're going to ask for advice, you have to be willing to receive it. Yeah. Yes. You can't be offended by somebody that doesn't like somebody just because you ask. So in the beginning stages of dating, it's really important to ask the people around you because they have a perspective that you don't. And it's so hard for friends to be honest it when is. they don't like your person. I have had close friends be honest with me um about me i felt it was too late when it was um past relationships and they were honest Mm -hmm. they didn't like him i felt it was too late but it's so hard to put yourself out there because it's risky because you're like if i say i don't like this person then they choose this person now you're like now you'll always know that i don't like them but also if you're a really good friend you'll you'll take the risk because you're saying like i can't stand by you forever with mm-hmm. this person, yep. I can't stand by that. You have to be honest. It's super risky and it's really hard, but I think I I might not have listened to it in the moment, but I still remember those conversations now and I wish I would have listened to it sooner. But I think that stuff sat with you. It still sits with me. So when I'm like the, my people. So when the time comes though, it's like, yeah, you might not break up with him in the moment, but you consider that later on and it helps you make decisions later on yeah you never know you're planting a seed yes that's good um so qualities look for in a spouse anything else that you would think that people should look for i feel like 
when I rattled them off. I think that kind of went for it yeah, for me, like went, the really important things. You kind of went off there. But I think like even if you don't have a good relationship with your family, that's not, you know, it's not true for everyone. I think I I do and you do. So having us have good relationships with our family was really important, but even if not, I think even if you're even if your person has grace for your family mm-hmm. or um empathy towards them even if you don't have a good relationship with them yeah i think that even if you don't have a good relationship with your family if your person can respect them and have a grace for them that says a lot about them yeah and you want somebody that's willing to push you to do things that better you and in in the idea of family i'm just thinking you know if i was ever at odds with my family you would be like, hey, you need to go talk to this person. You know, you need to go talk to your mom, your dad, your sister, whoever it may be. You need to make this right. You would give me perspective maybe on their side of things mm-hmm. if that if that was ever the case. And same with you. It's like if you're ever at odds with your family, I'm I'm not sitting there saying, oh, yeah, they suck. Like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'm saying, hey, hey, babe, like I know – I know it's your family. I know that you can get frustrated, but why don't you look at this side of it and, and you love them. They love you. So you need somebody that, yeah, has grace for, especially family dynamics, has grace for you and is willing to say things that better you and is for you, not willing to just get on the hate bandwagon of emotion and just and feed into it. Yeah. Um, I think that it would be cool if we talked about well, not cool, but I think maybe more impactful if we talked about our engagement season. Yeah, that'd be so sick, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we had people that talked about maybe like fear of commitment. And that's something that yeah. I don't know if maybe you can relate to that, but I know that I could relate to that in that season. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Um, I mean, yeah, I, I didn't experience a lot of, I guess, fear of, commitment or with you we talked about this a little bit on the last episode but you know i knew that i loved you after a month i said it after six months we dated for a year and a half we got engaged and we got married at two years and i think that was a timeline that made me feel really comfortable and we were both on the same page the entire time through it so i didn't really have i mean i know we'll get into your side of things because it's a little bit different but or maybe just like engagement season maybe if you want to talk about what any pointers really exp- you have or advice you have for people. Yeah, I didn't season. experience cold feet. Um, I also ha- had really great people around me that were really happy that we were together and, and spoke life into me. And so because of that, I didn't really have any question. I, I was so confident and sure that I was marrying you and right. But here's the here's one of the reasons is because – I wasn't going into marriage thinking, I hope this works out. Yeah. I was going into marriage thinking, you are my person and we are spending the rest of our lives together and it's going to be awesome. But there was no, ah, I hope, no, this is, we're committing to each other for life. So this is, am I, am I confident right now in that decision? Yes, I am. Okay, great. Then that means that's that means tomorrow I'm going to make that same decision and in going forward I'm I'm going to continue to wake up and make that. So, you know, marriage was not a a chance. It's not like a pulling a card trying to get something. For me, it was this is and you know we we talk about this too. Like divorce is never an option, and we don't say it in fights, and we never mentioned it because to us, marriage is marriage and it's commitment. And And so that's a boundary for us in fighting as well. That is a boundary, yeah, that we have kept. Um, and so for me, there wasn't a, a huge commitment issue or I, there was no fear for me, I think, because I, I really thought about marrying you. And and when I was thinking about marrying Adrian and engaged and I was never in a long-term relationship before you, right? So I thought to myself, before I even thought of marriage, when I was like, okay, I love Adrian. It was like, okay, is she going to be somebody that I can sacrifice every single day and I can drop everything and my entire life will be to serve her and lead her? Yeah, okay. Do our goals align? Yeah, generally our goals align. Do we have fun together? Yes. And and one of the other things that I had to reconcile is you are extremely close to your family. 
close knit mm-hmm. Italian family. And I knew that when we were dating. So when, I, when before we, I even thought about marrying you, when I thought about, I'm going to uh, propose to Adrian, my thought was, am I going to be okay being in, being in this tight knit family for the long run? And I said, yeah, I am. And that, that will be a value of mine in our marriage because I know that's such a value of hers. And it, it would, so I said, okay, am I going to be okay with that? I am. Okay. So all these things align. And so for me, it was a decision. And I think, I mean, marriage is a decision every day. Yeah. So for me, I didn't really experience any, any fear of, you know, committing, um, you know, which is kind of funny because I never really committed before that to, to people, mm-hmm. but I was ready to commit for you. Uh, and it's just been a resolution that I've, I've, I've tried to hold, but you have a little bit of a different story. I do. So, um, it's good. One side and then here's the other side. Yeah, I know. It's always a little bit of storytelling. It's different from both sides, but we got engaged and which now I'm interrupting you. (laughs) Let me just say, uh, the way I proposed was awesome. And the pictures are awesome. Maybe you guys will see it one day. We should share that. We should. I actually. We shall. When we got engaged, I had, I mean, we we really thought about it. I think I knew that this is what I wanted. You knew this is what you wanted. We talked about it too before. It wasn't some big surprise, surprise. where I was caught off guard and like, uh, I don't know. Like yeah. we knew that's what we wanted. We've talked about it. And um, I had told you like, okay, when you do this, this is a day for me as well. And mm-hmm. I want to enjoy it as well. I want to look a certain way. I have a dress that I picked out that I would like to wear. <laughs> I also got you something. So I'd like to have it ready. I'd like to have my nails done. I want to have my people there. I want it to feel special. I do have high expectations, but you know that you picked a bougie girl and that's on you. I did. But I'm, so, that's one of the qualities I like about you actually. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You don't like trash. Yeah. I don't do it small. So, um, Yeah, I think that was a really thought out decision. Um, I was confident in it. We got engaged in January and then, gosh, I think it was like springtime where my sister was married and um, I don't even like know how to say it or ring it up because it's just so, it still could make me cry to this day, but my sister her marriage was ending in our engagement season. And, oh, that was just so tough. Mm -hmm. It was so tough because I'd never experienced divorce in my family, like so personally and so close. And so to have that experience was just gut-wrenching to think like, oh, a marriage can fail and you can not trust someone. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That was really, really hard. And we're engaged. We're about to get married. And and this one is ending. And like, it was not even based on our experiences. Yeah. It was based on someone else's. And as I was meeting with, we had premarital counseling, which was really helpful because um, we had talked through this with the people that were doing our wedding. And they were my, they were my godparents. So they were people that I've known for forever that I trusted entirely. And so they know me, they know my family, they know you. And so I was talking through the season of, I, I'm like afraid, I'm scared. I told you that too. I was super honest about it. I'm really scared because I've never seen something like this happen. I've never had to experience it. And I just had to go back to, you've never given me a reason to feel that way. It's happened to other people. It's not happening to us. And as tragic as it is, like, I can't own that in my own personal life. So maybe you've had a parent that had a marriage fail. Maybe you've had a sibling or a close friend that's had a marriage fail. That's not you. That's not your experience. As hard as it is, I think maybe it it causes you to think more in depth about your decisions and what you want and what that means to you. But, you know, you can't take that as your own. That's, that's not you. That's not you. That's not me. And so when we were engaged, I had a, I had a really hard time overcoming that, but we did (laughs) because we had good people in our corner that could also confirm that this was a good thing. Yeah. So that was really helpful for me to have people who were ahead of me, who were with me, who knew you, who knew me, who knew us and could really just affirm that this is a good thing. And I think an important 
thing to mention is that season was super hard and we didn't have, like there weren't like answers. Like, yes, we had people that encouraged us and challenged us, but you know, Adrian came to me and she was like, Hey, I'm, I'm feeling this way and I feel guilty about it. And I know that you have never, we are, our season has never had anything that would make me feel this way. I just am scared because of what I'm seeing. And that was a hard season. And I, but I had to be like, I, I, I get it. I totally understand. And I just had to continually like daily affirm her and say, Hey, I'm not that, I'm not that guy. And I'm not going to be that. And I'm not, I'm not ever going to do that to you. And I know that it's hard to, you know, see that, but I, it was just a daily, a daily conversation really. And we just worked through it and we got through it. And, but that's, I think that's a lot of sometimes the, the journey through hard seasons is just like, Hey, it's daily. It's reminding ourselves what truth is. And then it's, it's walking forward and, and being confident in it. You were so gracious. I don't know how you must have felt us being engaged in me saying like, I'm afraid, you know, like that's like, yeah, but oh my gosh, like. I, well, I understood it. I mean. I mean, also you were experiencing it very much at the same time. As I was me. too. Yeah. In a different way. But um, yeah, it was, it was a tough season, but you know, there, there were no doubts for me. There were some doubts for Adrian, not because of our experience, but just because of life circumstances. And so that's, you know, that's how we navigated through it. Um, it may have been a rough wedding season, but I always tell my friends like, oh, maybe like it was a rough wedding season, but it's a good marriage. It's a great marriage. And I'd rather have. And I'd rather, I'd rather have, have a great marriage. A good marriage than a good wedding day. Amen. Any day. Um, okay, so so that was the the season, and then now let's let's talk about uh, how to know if they're the one. So Ooh, I think that's a common. I mean, it's a big, big question. question of how do you know if somebody is the one? If I'm dating well, them, do you believe in the one? Do you believe in that concept? I think that's a really good question to start out with. Yeah, did we answer this last episode? I don't know. But I don't know, but I think to go more in depth about it in this way. Yeah, so I think we did. Um, but we'll go more to, into depth with it. I believe in the one, and and when I say that, I believe that there is one person for you in marriage. In your in that person is the person that that you marry. It's I, the one you choose. It's the one that you choose. I don't think that there's one soul out there that your soul perfectly is supposed to be with. And then if you miss it and you don't decide to go to Phoenix in March for vacation and you're supposed to meet your soulmate there, oh, everything's everything's blown up in your life and you're with the, you know, crumb bum now. I don't think that that's, I don't think that's the case. I think that you get to choose. I think God is sovereign and he knows who you'll end up with, but that doesn't mean that there's specifically one person that you are supposed to be with. I think that you make a sacrificial commitment and you stick with it. I think people overcomplicate and over-spiritualize who their one is. Mm -hmm. Like there's like like you said, there's only one person in the world for me. And then, well, what happens when that fails? If that fails or if yeah. that person wrongs you and, you know, within the bounds of biblical divorce, like that happens. Like mm -hmm. I've seen people who have been remarried and they have the best spouse in the world and they're the yeah. best couple in the world. I just don't think that like that's necessarily the best term for it, but how to find the right person for you. I think that's a better, and hopefully, you know, your marriage doesn't end. Hopefully it does go on. Hopefully they, they do honor you the rest of your life. But if they don't, or if maybe you've had a past where you haven't, and then now you've had to, you know, rediscover what it means to live an honorable life or be a good spouse. Maybe you've had to overcome a situation like that. I just think like, doesn't mean that you can't be redeemed. Yeah. And in some, I don't know, in some regard, like using the one can be a, a cop out and excuse that people use where if you're married and marriage isn't going maybe the way that you thought it would, Oh, well maybe this wasn't like the one. Well, no, if you're married, they are the one. Even if they suck, they're the one. Yeah, you chose now, them. Now, obviously, I'm talking not in the confines of what you were saying, like biblical divorce. of, of But I'm saying like if it's, just, it's, if it's just like, oh, we're not having a fun time, there's turmoil, things like that, then you got to work 
at your one because that is your one. And yeah. un until something happens or something happens where God gives a specific designation that allows and sanctions divorce, then then you're they're your one. And if you look at it yeah. in that way, I think it causes people to figure things out. You know, I, it's almost like some people leave this this side exit door of the what if possibility of, oh, you know, ah oh, man, well, what if I wasn't with this person? And what if I was with a, a person that did this instead of what he does or she does? Oh, what if I was with somebody that respected me more? What if? And sometimes when we leave this door open, it just, we're just constantly looking through a, a door or a window, whatever you want to call it. But we're just like looking through this made up reality of what if instead of working at the fact that like, no, there's actually a husband or a wife that you have that needs you. And yes, it may suck and it may take work, but that's what's required because that's what marriage is. And that's what, yeah. you know, we can't, people have to stop having this reality of like, well, I chose wrong. Well, like that, that sucks, but you chose. So you well, got to make it work now. Yeah. And I'll tell people like, you know, I would rather you have no one than have the wrong one because yeah. there is such a thing as the wrong one. The wrong many. The wrong men. There's a ton of people, ton of dudes, ton of girls out there that you should not marry. Because you're talking about forever. Yeah. In best case scenarios. Now, obviously, we're saying all of this within the confines of you're physically safe. They're not cheating on you. They're not, you know, yes. breaking the confines of marriage. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> we're saying all of that within those bounds. But... Just choose the right person. Choose a person that has all the qualities, someone who honors you, someone who, who respects you, someone who cherishes you, mm -hmm. someone who values you, someone who makes you feel like a queen or a king. Like, have someone like that. I think that that is the one. Yeah, that is the one. And so if you have that perspective, it makes things a lot easier. So just demystify it. You know, don't go walking yeah. around. You know, it's so funny because like people are afraid to go out to coffee with somebody because they're, ah, well, I just don't know if they're somebody, <laughs> our doc's right here, he's trying to get up. I don't, I don't know if, if I should go out to coffee with this person because I just don't know if, if they're somebody that I would want to marry. Okay, well, go out and grab a cup of coffee and figure it out. Like take a, take a shot. You're not committing your lifetime to somebody because you go out for a cup of coffee. But in order to get there, you have to be willing to, to put yourself out there and actually see, you know, who you would want to be with in getting coffee and whatnot. Yeah, I think the one, it can just be a really mystical term. Like there's a one person out there for me. There's a sign or, you know, how do I know if I made the right choice? I think when you have your person, you're super confident and the people around you are confident and everyone can agree that they treat you well. Yeah. That they love the Lord, that they put the Lord first and that they can lead you. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's really simple actually. Yeah. I think people overcomplicate it because it is, it is a really big decision, but I think when you have all of these things that align, it's really simple. And I think mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when you're like, ah, oh, I don't know, you know, and they know, and your people know. And if you're mm -hmm. saying you don't know, they're probably not it. If you're saying you don't know, then you probably know you're just afraid to say it. Yeah. Because I knew and I felt confident about it. And even in the season that we had in our engagement, I was scared. But again, it had nothing to do with us. Yeah. I mean, you must be a, you must be a gambling addict if you are willing to make a lifelong decision based off of the, I don't know, maybe. Like, I think they are. You know they are when they are. Yep. And that's such a cliche saying, though, like, when you know, you know, like the the take or fake, I guess, like, when you know, you do know. Absolutely. I think that's very real. And it's so hard. People who are single, you're like, oh, that's the most annoying thing I've ever heard. Like, when you know, you know. But it's so true. When you know, you just know. You're confident. And that's how you can make a decision. Yep. Demystify it. Okay, so do you want to do some uh, Q and A's? Because people submitted Q and A's. Yes, people submitted questions. Thank you guys Let's for submitting questions. It. So 
if you we'll we'll do this every week or every episode i think uh of answering some so, questions yeah. um we have a list of them out that so we have some in the vault the question vault mm -hmm. all anonymous and so maybe we'll we'll get to some in the future but um i think we have a list of them here yeah someone wanted to ask more about our age gap because i said that you were three and a half or three years younger than me yep and so they're like oh i have someone that maybe it, I'm interested in or is interested in me, but they're younger than me. And like, you know, how does that work? I think it actually is once you get to a certain point in life, age doesn't really matter all that much. No, I mean, like when I was in kindergarten, you were in sixth grade. So, oh, so you have weird. to bring it up. It's so disgusting. But um, no. no, but actually, yeah, I mean, three years isn't a big deal. It was a big deal, though, when we were when I was an intern and you were a staff member. It seemed like a bigger deal because I, life I life seasons. Kind of is, yeah, life but. seasons were, were pretty different then. But I do think like a lot of women are like, oh, guys can be so immature, like to date down in age can yeah. be like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. I feel like for you, you were very mature for your age. So I think it, <laughs> thank you. I much. think it actually really worked for us. I don't think that's true for everyone, but I don't know. I don't feel like it's that big of a deal. No, th three years is not a big deal. Like I know people that are, are much more than that. And, and so I think it's more about like life season and maturity. That's the big thing of, you know, yeah. The older that I get, the more I realize, like I'm 29 now and I know 29 year olds that I'm like, oh, you stopped emotionally developing when you were 18 years old, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, you, you stopped growing. You're actually a 16 year old in a 30 year old body. And there's a lot of people out there like that. So it's like when you just say, well, I want somebody that's this age, it's, it's kind of, I don't know, it doesn't make a lot of sense because you might find somebody out there that is a little bit younger or, but, but is awesome. And it is a little bit. Again, with a the disclaimers, bit. you guys. Yeah, three years isn't that that big of a deal. So for us, we never really, we haven't really felt it. Um, I don't think so. It is funny when we look back, though, and I'm <laughs> like, oh, like the people that you're friends with, like were my brother's friends yeah, when no, I was funny. in high school. Like I was a senior. Jacob was a freshman. You mm -hmm. would have been in eighth grade. Yep. That is weird. So like, it's weird now because I'm like, oh, I just don't think I could be friends with people that are so young. But, you know, you, you do get over it. And I think it's more of a maturity thing. It's not really an age thing. If you would have told eighth grade Spencer, <laughs> hey, right now your wife in the future is a senior. I'd be like, whoa, I'm a baller. Yeah. But I still think that being with you. Um, so, yeah, age gap, not that big of a deal. Seriously, we haven't really felt it at all. I mean, maybe for a couple of years of marriage, you had to rent the cars. <laughs> I did. did oh my gosh. Yeah. Like when we first got married, if we would do vacations or our honeymoon, I had to rent the cars. But yeah. again, not a very big deal. Not a big deal. We got, I got married younger, I guess. I was 24. You were 21. Yeah. Yeah. But not a huge deal. I, people ask like, what was it like getting married so young? What is it like being young? I don't feel like that's super young, 24 to be married. My mom was married at 19. Different time though. Different time. Not to say that your mom is old because I'm not, but it was just a different time where like people were grown up by the time they were 18, 17. Yeah. So I don't know. 18 year olds I, are not grown up now. I do feel like though, I had, like you said, I had my life together. You had your life together. We didn't have a lot of baggage. Like I knew how to steward my finances. I had a car, I had a savings, I had a good credit score, like silly practical things. Yeah. But when you're young, it's like, if you don't know how to manage money, you can put yourself in such a deep pit mm -hmm. that it puts such financial stress on your relationship that it just doesn't have to be there. Yeah. yeah. Um, we had another question that um, asked about how, how do you navigate life with your in-laws? Oh, we have experience in that. Um, me, yeah, we both me have <laughs> and my in-laws, we hate each other. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is not true. <laughs> well, like Spencer said, funny. I am very close with my family. Yeah. My family literally has Sunday family dinners every single week. Mm -hmm. And I also work with my family and I consider my siblings to be some of my best friends. Yep. So we engage in life together a lot. Like 
my mom, we come over every Sunday and she's we like, oh. saw them three hours ago. But she'll be like, oh, I haven't seen you all week or I don't see you. And I'm like, I see you all the time. And I would still like to spend more time with them. But it's just funny because we spend a lot of time together. Yeah. And you knew that when you were dating me, like, I have to be okay with this. Yeah. And that, yeah, I talked about, you know, I had to make that decision, but it wasn't a hard decision. I love Adrian's family and I love my in-laws and we get along and I respect them. I honor them. They're the best. They support us. Like they're awesome. And I'm, there's people that have in-laws that are definitely aren't awesome and that suck, but my in-laws do not. So it's easy for me to do it. Um, I think it's easy when you have to realize, especially in a dating season, parents are going to be so protective over their child because it's, it's their child, right? So some people will get this like, I don't know. Some people get this like self-righteous in dating. Oh, well, your parents, your parents don't like me, this and that. Well, why don't they like you? Right? You can get all self-righteous. Oh, yeah, what did you do? Yeah, what did you, what did you do? I saw a meme and it was like, some people may forget what you did to me, but my mom will never forget what you did to me. <laughs> it's so true. And so, you know, people just respect a parent because here's the thing when you're dating their covering is still their parent yeah that's the covering of their life so for you to disregard that covering and act like you're now the covering and what does that mean it means like you know maybe not giving them the time of day maybe not coming around to say hi like picking if they're living i don't know if they're living together or whatever but if you pick her someone up for a date and you don't go in to say hi to the parents like all that stuff matters and it, it all builds because it, are you somebody that honors other people? And if you are, then honor and bring into. Now, it's not like we're talking about every aspect of our relationship and our dating with her parents, but there was a level of respect to say, I asked your dad to date you. I asked your dad to marry you. And the Bible says to honor your father and mother. Why would you not do that to your father in law and mother in law? Yeah. So, you know, I, I think there's, with any family, there's like, a couple instances in the past where it was like, oh, you know, that we're at odds or he, he said something, she said something, I said something, but it's all we reconcile it. And that's the thing is, is I look at your in-laws, not as like in-laws, I look at them as, as family. So my family says F O E family over, family everything, over everything and we do mean it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. So and your family, I feel like they live down the street from us. <laughs> they do. Yeah. Your parents live down the street from us. So I'm always like, Hey, will you, you know, or can we, you know, we're always communicating with them, but your family like has a deep connection as well. Mm-hmm. And I love your family. I don't know, you guys. I just feel like we can't relate to that. We have, I have really great in-laws and yeah. you have really great in-laws. Your parents, your mom, I knew first and she is just hilarious. Yeah. I have always loved your She's mom. She's a goofball. Your dad is so steadfast. Your sisters are amazing. I love them. And I've gotten to know them more over the years. I feel like when we were first dating, we didn't spend a whole lot of time with your family. So I didn't know them as well. But it's been like nine years. I feel like I better know them by now. And I love them. I'm like, I'm always trying to spend more time with them. Yeah. And so we don't have the experience of not liking our in-laws. But there are... But we could take prejudice if we wanted to. If we wanted to, we could find the things in them that we didn't like. Yeah. And we could we could pick a bone with them on either side. On either side. And we could be like, ah, oh, you know what? I don't like that they do this. I don't like that they say this. I don't like that they believe this. You know? Right. We, we could find those things or we could, you know, love them where they're at and cherish them and honor them. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I just, I love your family. I know you love my family and I just don't see it that way. Yeah. And I, but I will say like, there are people out there that have in-laws that are toxic and, and not good. And, and in a, in a marriage, right. Uh, you have to realize that your family, like your family is your wife, your spouse, your kids. That's your, your family first. That's your family, right? If we're, oh, family first, we're talking about my family is Adrian. And when we have a kid, it will be my Adrian and our kid. That's our, that's my family. Now the in-laws and the extended family or even immediate, but above that's the out, that's the second ring. Now, obviously they're still family and we love them, but if they were toxic and if they were unhealthy and they were trying to impose things on us, then I had 
I would have to make decisions that, hey, this is my family and we're going to make boundaries based off of protecting my yeah. family. And so, so you have to understand that of like, some people think like, oh, you know, I have this, in, these in-laws that are saying this or doing this. And it's like, well, you have to protect your family first and you have to protect your spouse first. And sometimes that takes hard decisions of saying, hey, we love you guys, but we're going to not be at this event or we're not going to bring so-and-so or your kid around because of these reasons. And that's a hard decision to make, but you have to realize that you can still be honoring and, and do that. Boundaries are a healthy thing. They are. Very and healthy. any relationship boundaries are a healthy thing. We talk about boundaries between ourselves and fighting and like how we do that in a healthy way. We're talking about boundaries with your extended family and how you protect your peace in your home. Yeah. And I think that if you value love, right? Our church says from recreation to confrontation, the motive of all actions is love. So even when you disagree with your extended family, I think you can do it in a loving way. Absolutely. So I don't think you have to be, doesn't have to be difficult. If they're choosing to do that, you just, you let them do that. Mm -hmm. You let them react however they want to react. You don't, you can't, can't control their actions, but you can control your reactions. Yeah. That's good. That's a good word, preacher. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Well, you just ruined that. <laughs> Was that Elvis? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Next, <laughs> next question. Um, how do you treat her, I'm assuming you, in that question, like a Proverbs 31 woman? Well, what is a Proverbs 31 woman? I, I kind of like read through it and these were kind of the things that like when I read it, these these attributes stick to, stuck out to me. Um, she's diligent. She's trustworthy. She's good. <laughs> what? Makes think, no, no, no. They just, the way that you're reading it off makes me think of Miss America. She's... Beauty she, and she's great. Yes. I'm singing a lot. She's, I don't know why. <laughs> also, I would like to point out that that's probably... I probably shouldn't know that. Like I just told, I told my, on myself that no, I, that's a really good I know movie. a Miss Congeniality. We're movie people. Yeah. Miss Congeniality is a good movie. Okay. Proverbs 31 woman is Miss Congeniality. No. <laughs> <laughs> Proverbs 31 woman. She's diligent. She's trustworthy. She's good. She's smart, strategic, strong, honorable, generous, courageous, confident, wise, kind. Wow. You're all those things. Right. Well, when you think of a Proverbs 31 woman, you're like, wow, that's it. Yeah, how do you treat her? How do you treat someone like that? Or how do you help someone in developing maybe those characteristics? Yeah. Because uh, not everyone's perfect. Not everyone's always just, those things. I don't know. I don't know. How do you treat me? I know, I'm just kidding. Uh, I think that, you know, I think one of the biggest, we don't really have confrontation in this way but i one of the shifts in my head and i don't know where when this happened but i think i realized in dating and then in marriage that we were two completely separate people and being separate people were very very different in that my gifts does, don't mean that those are your gifts and your gifts aren't mine and and mm. your talents and your abilities are so much different than me right and so i I think that I had to get over the idea that I was trying to make you more like me because I think that's natural of if I'm trying, if I'm trying to lead you to, to be closer with Jesus and be the best version of yourself. Well, how does that work in my mind? It works in the way that I see myself and the way that I operate. And so I think it'd be natural to try to, to, try to get you to be like me mm. and and I think yeah. that's where a lot of people go wrong sometimes is they, they don't look at their significant other as their own unique individual that God made that is so different, but also so beautiful. And they get frustrated with them because they're not like them versus how do I help you become the best version of who God created you to be? So I think it's, it's, it's you celebrate differences. Yeah. Healthy differences. Cause you know, there can be differences that are healthy, but I don't just get frustrated in the way that you're different. I, I try and celebrate that with you. So I don't know. One of the most practical examples I can think of is like Adrian loves taking pictures. She's like a picture person. I like the memories. We get a coffee. I can't take a sip before she takes, she takes a picture. We're out at the pumpkin patch. 
take a picture. It's just, and I, I'm, I'm teasing you, but I'm thankful for it because we do have a log of pictures in our, anybody that looks at our life is going to be like, man, you documented everything because we do because you love pictures. Now, when we go to a pumpkin patch, right? I can be super frustrated and be like, oh my God, Adrian wants a picture. Cause I'm, I'm just not that way. No, you shouldn't, you need to be coming and doing this, but it's like, I, I need to recognize like, no, this is like you said, this isn't just about you taking pictures. This is like, oh, she loves memories and she loves documenting. So it's like, yeah, I'll go, I'll smile for a picture. I'll pose, you know, obviously there's a limit to it because I'm human. There is a limit. There is a, the limit does exist. The limit exists. <laughs> um, and there's a limit to it, but it's like, I, I recognize, okay, you're so different. And I, and I learned to love those differences in you and champion those differences. And those I found like the things that you're interested in are also like your gifts. Like, I think mm-hmm. that's a gift. Yeah. So I, you know, that's part of it is, is stop looking to change somebody to be a clone of yourself. And, and instead, how can you actually equip them to be who God called them to be? Cause them being in their designed purpose and in in will of what God has for them is going to make them a much more fulfilled person at peace. So for me, it was, okay, recognize where you're at and recognize how I can like cheer you on and, and help you grow in what you're good at and what you're passionate at. Um, and then above that, I mean, I don't know, just like the baseline things of, I respect you. I honor you. I, I try and lead you as best as I can. Um, I try and create the atmosphere of our household and like in trust and having fun. And I don't know. I think it's a lot of this is probably more, I could be more practical, but it's just a matter of, okay, yeah, we, we serve Jesus. We love Jesus. We serve the Lord. And, and in that, I don't know, God does a lot. The Holy Spirit works a lot more than I could ever work. So (laughs) it's just a matter of, I guess, trusting in that and leading you in that. But I think it's good to hear from you too, because anyone that knows me or knows us thinks that like, you just treat me so well. Like you have a lot of people that look up to us in our relationship because of how you treat me. So I think hearing your perspective on how you celebrate differences and not try to like make me be like you, like how you're like, okay, I like my solitude during like spending time together, but like, Mm -hmm. how do we do both and do it well? Yeah. I think, yeah, it's just a matter of, it's, it's just, it's, it's sacrifice and yeah, I'm not perfect at it. Obviously nobody is, but you know, I I have to daily think, okay, what, what can I lay down for Adrian today? And I think when you do that just practically more and more, you'll just find that the more you sacrifice for your spouse, the more that, you know, you, you fall in love with them and you help grow when you help get bonded and. Yeah. I don't know if that's a sufficient answer for you, but I think it's well said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You do do (laughs) not like Elvis. Why are you making fun? He is the king, baby. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other questions? I feel like that kind of wraps it up. That wraps it up. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Well, thank you guys. I think we went for a little bit longer this time. We have a lot to discuss. There's just so, so much, but... I think next episode, I don't know what we're ta- we'll talk about. We kind of just talk about that. But if you have suggestions, let us know. I, th- I kind of like the idea of boundaries. Maybe we'll go more into that next episode of just like different boundaries and different seasons of life. But um, thank you guys for listening as always. If you made it all the way through, wow. I mean... <laughs> thank you. No, thank you so much to everyone who's watched, who's supported. Um, it just really means the world to us. This is just a passion of ours. We want to see people with healthy relationships, healthy marriages. And like we said, we just want to see people um, succeed. And we hope that this can be a tool for you. So if you like what you've seen, what you've heard, make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, Ooh, give us good ratings. Yep. Uh, we It would mean so much Share with us. somebody. Share it with someone. Share it with your spouse. If your spouse is being a dummy oh. and it's like, oh man, send them this. Let us know what you think. DM us, text us, let us know what you think of the episode. We love to hear the feedback. Um, It means a lot. Yeah. So we're excited for what's to come. We're excited for episodes in the future. Make sure that you guys leave a review. But we will see you guys next time on It Takes Two. See ya.